welcome to our uh, video today we are going to learn ncrt syllabus chapter number 9 the living organisms characteristics and habitats yes in same one also you have learned the different ways of and different characters of different creatures isn't it regarding earthworm cockroach snail the way of talking the way of the way of walking isn't it how they eat how they walk how they speak all the were a different way today in this chapter we will also learn the habitats of a different living organisms and also its characteristics now what is the organisms organism includes all the living things all the living creatures are termed as organisms and what is a habitat habitat means surroundings of an organism which provides food water shelter and protection to the organism yes so you can say your home the place where you live is a habitat you know children that when the person comes from a abroad or a foreign countries some of your relatives they have fall ill in our country why because such kind of climates doesn't suit their body but it suits our body because we are habituated with it so organisms which are living continuously in the sea water pond yes they have a different characteristics why which are flying also have a different characteristics some are also living on the land on the land and in the land yes just like snakes and they make a hole in the land and they live over there so they have such kind of body characteristics that they can survive in such kind of climate yes we cannot stay properly we cannot live a proper life in a very cool climate we may fall ill isn't it even the person those who are living in a cold climate they cannot survive properly in the hot climate because their body has not such kind of features or not such kind of characteristics yes there is terrestrial kind of habitat and also aquatic kind of habitat that we will learn one by one habitat is a place where a creature live isn't it it provides food shelter and so on yes various kind of food is provided in the different kind of climate and different habitat have a different kind of things okay now adaptation just now as i said that as we are living in hot climate we have adapted that kind of climate isn't it so adaptation is a features of animals that help them live in their habitat yes we can easily survive yes but in arab countries it is a more hot hot climate so it is hard for us to survive over there so we doesn't have such kind of adaptation by our body isn't it even in a too cold climate it is hard for us to live so adaptation means features of animals that help them live in their habitat in previous lesson you have also learned that yak and other animals polar bear have a very thick fur on their body they can easily live in a cold region yes because it protect them from the cold such kind of features are on their body so such kind of features help them to live in that kind of habitat now biotic components yes in your chapter biotic components is given you know very well that peli and bhujo yes are the two characters are the two children one boy and one girl they are traveling from one place to another they have seen a different creatures at different place when they went to desert they found a different kind of plants 
and camel and uh, plants like cactus isn't it but uh, when they went to himalayas mountain region they find a different other kind of trees such as oaks pines deodars and animals are also different kind in the himalayan region but in the humid kind of climate they also find not oak and deodar but they found casuarina and other creatures so different kind of creatures survive in different kind of climate and they have such kind of adaptation now biotic components biotic components include all the kind of living organism yes all the living organisms are included in the biotic components now what do you mean by abiotic components abiotic components means it includes the non living things of a habitat yes non living things of a habitat are in the category of abiotic components we can give the example that is air water soil sunlight all these are considered as a abiotic component so it is a non living things of a habitat and its examples are air water soil sunlight and so on now terrestrial habitat yes students you are clear with the word terrestrial the creatures which live on the land are known as terrestrial animal or terrestrial creature now terrestrial habitat includes deserts mountains and grasslands yes the living organisms which are living on the deserts mountains and grassland are having terrestrial habitat now what is the aquatic habitat aquatic habitat includes ponds lakes river sea and ocean yes aquatic is come from the word aquaria and that is the aqua aqua means the water aqua means the water so it includes the water creatures and terrestrial terrestrial means the land so whichever creatures survive on the land all are included in the terrestrial habitat yes say they have a different body features they have a different kind of food and they have a different creatures so they can easily survive in such kind of habitat while the organisms which are living in water yes you know very well that we require oxygen to respire even they can also respire from the water so they have such kind of habitat so that are all are included in aquatic habitat now let us learn about the different examples which survives in a different places first of all let us see the in the forest yes in the forest we can find animals like lion deer cheetah isn't it even ant and trees yes you have also heard about the african jungles very huge kind of trees are there even the sunlight cannot enter over there such kind of trees are found in the forest so they have a different kind of habitat and different adaptation while on mountains you can find yak polar bear and you can also find a thing like rock isn't it rocks are found in not in sea but mostly on the mountains and also deodar is a kind of tree which is found on the mountains now in the desert yes students you can find in the desert camels you cannot find a cow or lion in the desert isn't it because camel can easily survive in the desert how it is can survive that i will tell you then even snack you can find also more amount of sand in the desert yes sand is found more in the desert and plants like cactus yes mango trees are never seen in the desert but plants like cactus which have a certain kind of habitat can 
found in the desert now in the sea yes in the sea all the things are surrounded by salty water that is the saline water so they take air from the water only they take oxygen from the water only let us see some of the example whale dolphin shark you can have many many by reading various books you can find many many examples octopus yes and fish fish are of also different kinds and sponges yes sponges are also found in the sea only it cannot found in the forest or on the mountains neither in the desert let us see some about the other yes which are living on the land there is a rabbit squirrel monkey and grass yes we find less amount of sand or not also but we can find more amount of grass and such kind of animals live on the land now why camel can easily survive in what a uh, desert because camel have a long leg which re, uh, keep it away from the hot climate of the sand that body remains very very far away from the sand so it has a very long leg even it excrete a less amount of urine and it uh, dung is also dry and its sweat also very 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 less so it lose a very less amount of water so without water also it can survive for many many days in the desert in desert water is not found so desert animals have certain kind of adaptation certain kind of characteristics certain kind of features which helps them to survive in the desert even in the sea you know very well that fish octopus all such things can easily live you have learned in lesson number 8 that fish have a very good fins to swim its body structure is a streamlined which helps them to move very fast in the water such kind of features we doesn't have neither the forest animals also have so they cannot live easily in the sea they also have a gills which helps them to take the oxygen from the water so such kind of features and such kind of characteristics help them to survive in the sea so it is necessary to have certain kind of features to survive in a certain way even if we have learned that a bird has a very good wings which help them to fly we doesn't have wings isn't it their body structure is such that they can have a very good balance in the air and they can move very easily in the sky so such kind of features are found in some birds while the sea animals have a different adaptation different habitats and different characteristics so these are the sum of the examples so now you might be very much clear about the habitat and the adaptation what is the adaptation adaptation means the features which helps them to live in certain kind of climate so the organisms both plants and animals living in a habitat are its biotic components so you are also clear i have already told you about the biotic components and abiotic components what are the abiotic components sunlight heat soil air are all the abiotic components now let me tell you one activity you can take the seeds okay divided into four parts in one of the chapter you also learn how to sprout the seeds the germination take place this is the beginning of a life of a new plant germination means the beginning of a new life of a plant now you have to take seeds and divide it into four parts first part you can keep completely in the water submerge in the water submerge means it should be totally deep inside the water second part you can keep near the cupboard means totally dark region 
Third, you can also keep that part in a totally sunny room or you can also take a place in a, your courtyard or in your porch, okay, where the full sunlight is coming. One is in water, one is in courtyard, fully sunlight, one is in the dark place. And last one you can keep in a cool region that is near the refrigerator, isn't it? Or you can also keep inside the refrigerator. Now you see that how the germination take place in all these four kind of seeds. It will be students totally, totally different. Seeds are the same, but as they have got a different kind of climate, they will germinate in a different way. You will realize that these abiotic components have a very good effect on these seeds. You can find what is the difference in all these four. You know that very well that plant needs air, water and sunlight to grow. By doing this activity you will come to know what is the difference. One which you are keeping in totally in water means submerged, totally deep inside the water. One is in the hot climate, one is in the dark and one is in the cold. So you will come to know that after few days what change you find in all this four. All this four will grow in a different way. It will germinate in a different way. Now let us see the some features of the terrestrial habitats. As I have told you that certain features are having camel. They have a very long legs which keep away them from the sand. So they can protect themselves in the heat also. But what about the creatures like snake and rat which survive in the desert? They doesn't have a long leg. So they live deep inside the sand. They make a burrow in the sand which is deep from the uh, land portion. So you know that in desert region days are very hot while nights are very cold. So during daytime they protect themselves from the heat by going inside the burrow which is very much deep inside the sand. So snake and red come out during the night only in the desert region when there is a cool. Now what about the plants? Yes, I have told you that even the camel urinate very less, isn't it? So it loses less amount of water. What about the plants? Yes, you have learned about the transpiration. The process by which the leaves leave the some drop of water is known as the transpiration in which the water is released in the leaves. Now plants, in plants also it loses very little water through transpiration. And transpiration process also take place in the plants in desert region but it lose very less amount of water. Then leaves are either absent or small. They have a different kind of leaves which are either absent. Yes, you know that cactus. It is a form of stem only. It doesn't have a leaves. So photosynthesis is also or done with the help of this stem only okay in cactus plant we are talking about the desert region plant then leaves are either absent or small now or in the shape of spines so we lose very less amount of water and process of photosynthesis is either carried out by stem also even the roots are very deep as the roots are very deep, it helps to absorb the water from the land very easily. So roots are very very deep in the desert region, so it can absorb the water easily. Then stem is also covered with a thick waxy layer. Yes, it helps them to retain water. It helps them to retain water, so it is covered with a thick waxy layer. So such kind of features are found in the trees, in the leaves, in the plants and different kind of features are found in the desert animals 
which helps them to live in desert they have a certain kind of adaptation we will see about the mountain regions which kind of animals are found in the mountain regions and which kind of features they are having these habitats are normally very cold and windy yes mountain region habitats are normally very cold and windy and also there is a snowfall sometimes there is also snowfall over there in mountain regions now trees found in the mountain areas are cone shaped and have sloping branches why such kind of features it has it has a very uh concept and sloping branches which helps to move away the rain water which easily slope away due to such kind of shape even the rain water and even the snow it can slope easily from it and it will not get damaged <coughs> leaves are needle like yes even the leaves are needle like which helps to remove the extra water which can easily slope away from it now what are the features of the animals yes animals which are in the mountain regions they have a very thick skin or a fur yes students you know that we can protect ourselves from the cold by wearing sweaters but what about the animals if they are uh prayed or they are protected by the human beings then it is a different thing but they can protect themselves because nature has given them a thick fur or a thick skin so they can easily survive in this cold region so such kind of features to plants and animals helps them to live properly in the mountain region now let us see about the grasslands yes in grasslands we have seen that lion is there tiger and many other animals are living let us see what features the lion is having yes the eyes of lions are in the front of face which helps to find its prey very easily yes for its food nature has given the eyes in such a location that it can easily see the prey it can easily find the other animals which it wants to eat even the color of the lion is brown which helps them to hide inside the forest it can easily hide from the other animals and it can easily find the prey even the claws are withdrawn in the toes claws are withdrawn in the toes so it can easily walk and also find the prey now what about the deer yes deer has a very strong teeth which helps them to chew the hard plants deer is having a very strong teeth to chew the hard plants even the long ear because it has to protect itself from the predator it should not get hunted by other animals it has to save its life so it is a very long ear which protects and which helps it to give the movement of other animals if any other uh, any other animals are moving around it it can easily find out with the help of its ear it can hear and easily find out and it also have eyes on the sides of its head yes lion is having the eyes in the front of face to find the prey easily while eyes on the sides of its head are found in the deer because it helps to save itself from the predator it can see everywhere it can see easily around all the sides all the surroundings because it has a eyes on its head on the sides of its head even the speed of deer is very good so when it sees any predator it can save its life by running away it has a very good speed so it can run away when any predators is coming and it can save its life okay now let us learn about the aquatic habitat 
you are cleared with the terrestrial that certain kind of features help them to survive very well in desert region in mountain region now which kind of features or which kind of characteristic the aquatic creatures have let us see so they can survive in the aquatic habitat yes you know students very well that fish has a streamlined bodies isn't it streamlined bodies help them to move easily in the water they can find a direction and they can cover a distance very easily due to streamlined feature now they also have a very good fins and tail which helps them to move very fast in the water they can move easily certain creatures like squid octopus doesn't have a streamlined features how they survive they live in the deeper parts of the ocean they don't have to move more they live in the deeper part of the ocean now you all are also aware that gills gills are present in the aquatic creatures gills helps them to get oxygen dissolved in water they have gills due to that they can take oxygen from the water easily <coughs> even the dolphins and whales have blow holes they doesn't have a streamlined features they have a blow holes they doesn't have gills so with the help of blow holes they can breath from the air yes they have blow holes in the upper part of the body which creature dolphin and whales so they can take breath they can breathe in the air now roots of aquatic plants yes roots of aquatic plants where what are the type of roots in the mountain region no we have learn about the desert region isn't it they are very deep in the sand so they can absorb water easily here which kind of roots are there yes roots of aquatic plants are small in size in desert region it was very much deep here the roots are small in size and help to anchor them in the soil yes it only helps them to anchor in the soil stems the stems of aquatic plants are long and hollow leaves and flowers float on the surface yes you know that lotus plant isn't it flowers and leaves are floating on the surface while stems are long and hollow which can help them to survive properly in the water now even the leaves of the submerged aquatic plants are ribbon like due to ribbon like structure or highly divided that they flow of water will not damage them such kind of features ribbon like structures helps them to survive easily and water will not damage the plant otherwise over water will also damage the plant now what about the frogs yes frogs have a strong hind legs to leap and catch a prey such kind of features such kind of characteristic help them to catch a prey easily and web feet to help them swim in water yes they are also living in the water so they have a very good web feet which helps them to swim in water so such kind of characteristics are found in the creatures of aquatic and also in the aquatic plants which help them to survive in the aquatic habitat so different features and different characteristics different creatures have to survive in certain habitat isn't it so adaptation in different animals is a different now stimuli 
what is a stimuli it is a changes in our surroundings that make us respond to them okay the changes around us which make us respond to them is called a stimuli it is also found in all the creatures now let us learn about the organisms organisms need food yes we all need food because food give us energy and it is required to perform the various process or various function or various way for to live a life so energy is very much important in our body we get energy from the food even the plants also need food all the creatures need food so that is the one of the characteristics that organisms need food living things need food now organisms so growth yes we all see growth in all the creatures in the plant also in all the living things growth is there there is no growth in the non living things then organisms respire yes respiration is very much important yes we take oxygen and give out the carbon dioxide why plants during respiration they take the carbon dioxide and give out the oxygen but during photosynthesis the amount of oxygen is taken and carbon dioxide is given out but the amount of oxygen release in the process of food preparation is quite much more than the oxygen they use in respiration isn't it so <clears throat> we learn that the in sunlight plants use carbon dioxide to produce food and give out oxygen the amount of oxygen released in the process of food preparation by plants is much much more than the oxygen they use in the respiration now you also know that organism respire in different way fish have a gills to respire even the aquatic animals also respire aquatic plants also respire now organisms respond to stimuli yes there is always effect of surroundings and which makes them to respond so all the organisms respond to stimuli whatever yes suddenly you know that hot things touch to you you will get uh, attack and you will get fire so you will move away your hand even you know that in the kitchen also during night when the suddenly light is on the cockroaches will go away so it respond to the changes it responds to the surrounding and they make us respond so all the different changes will make us respond and that is a stimuli even you might have seen in the plant like mimosa isn't it in the plants like mimosa they are just known as touch me not they are also known as touch me not plant the leaves are close or fall when someone touches them so they respond them when somebody touches it will directly close their leaves which plant mimosa plant it is also known as touch me not plant so stimuli is always found in the, all the living organism even when you place a potted plant in a little light or in a full light it will uh, grow in certain way only so it will effect to the light it will respond if the height is not proper it is the close one then it will not grow erect one all this so that it respond so there is a effect of stimuli now organisms and excretion yes we always remove the waste products from our body 
even plants also remove the waste products sometimes they store in such a way that it is not harmful to the plant it is also known as secretion excretion is always found in the human beings but in plants it is also known as secretion the removal of waste products it is also observed in aquatic plants in human beings and in all the living creatures now organism reproduce their own kind yes all the living organism reproduce of their own kind you know that chick lack the egg and the hen is produce yes all the organism mostly produce the same species or same creature of their own kind but there is some difference in plant yes in plants it is possibility that by cutting or by the different way the different kind of plants from the other plant can be obtained even you know that there is a potato is produced from the bud of a potato it is reproduced through the bud of a potato it is not necessary that it is produced always from the seed so in plants or in vegetables there is a different ways of production reproduction now all the organisms move yes we know that all the organisms move all the living creatures move even due to wind you have seen that the leaves of a plants are shaking even when there is a heavy storm the leaves may cut or fall down even the trees fall down due to the heavy storm so there is a movement found in all the living creatures all the organisms so the movement so students now you are very much clear that all the organisms need food for getting energy for various process or various function in the life even all the organisms shows the growth growth is also very important all the organism respire yes when you keep your hand inside the sac of a wheat you feel it is a warm why because even the seed respire and heat is released so all the organism respire all this seed so this certain characteristics like food it requires food it shows the growth it respire as respond to stimuli it excrete and secretion is seen in the plant and all the animals also organism reproduce their own kind yes even the plant also reproduce their own kind and movement is also found in the organism so then what is the life yes the life is a very much beautiful though there is a much more diversity around us all the diversities in living being around us are there then also we conclude that life is so much beautiful so students this is your chapter i hope that you are clear with all these points thank you have a good day